Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is, what is it? It is the 19th of uh, February, 2014. And we have gathered together a couple of students, and if other students want to join us, we're, they may join us, and some teachers who use Google Hangouts. And we're, um, many of us here are Youth Voices teachers, and so I've called this a Youth Voices Meetup. Um, and we can explain if we need to what that's all about. But also, um, we've been trying to start, we've been doing these Hangouts now. I, I didn't even go back and check. I think there have been about 100 shows on, on Hangouts. Um, but there, um, this, this we meet here every Wednesday night, and we've started um, doing Hangouts with students as well, um, um, connecting kids talking about their projects that they're doing on this openly networked site called youthvoices.net. Um, Chris Sloan and um, Joe Paraisio are two of the people who make that happen most of all, I would say. Your kids are really connecting, and um, that's been very exciting. And so I thought we'd uh, reach out to the larger, I don't know, Google educational community and see what other people are doing with um, with using Google Hangouts and so forth as well. So we've invited those folks and then um, other people will introduce themselves. So we're going to just talk about how to deepen our collaborative inquiries. How about that? <laughs> so and, and I think there's been some really interesting things happening so far and we'll see what happens as we go. Cassidy, you're, you're first here on one of the ways that <laughs> this goes. Mm -hmm. Um, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Um, I'm Cassidy, and I'm 18. I go to Judge, and we in been, Salt Lake City, by the way. Yes, in yeah. Salt Lake City, and um, I'm a student of Mr. Sloan's, and um, yeah, this is the first time I've done this type of Google Hangout. I did one um, at school, and it was really fun. I really liked it. I really liked connecting with the students and getting other people's input besides my classmates. Because we do, we do that all the time. So you always hear like what our classmates think. But hearing someone from a different state, I really like, and I think that's really cool. And actually seeing the person too, I really like that because it's not just like internet and youth voices. I really like seeing the person to get a different aspect and actually seeing them because you can connect with them differently when you actually see the person. I think so. I really like Google Hangouts. I think it's a good so, thing. Cassidy, keep talking a little bit. What? Why do you think that is? What do you think makes it? I just think like you can actually connect with the person when you see them. When it's just like a screen and you can't see the person, like I lose interest. I don't know. Like I just feel like it's a person talking and you can't really tell if they're really interested in what you're writing, if they're just saying it for an assignment kind of deal. But when you can actually see their face, they're communicating with you, they're smiling at you, they're talking to you, they're interested with you. And so that's why I like Google Hangouts and they're asking you questions, you're replying back. And so I feel like face-to-face -face is like the way to go, if so that makes you, sense. It absolutely does. You moderated Youth Voices uh, Live 5, right? Um, so if anybody yeah, wants to so. go back and see that. Um, can, what do you remember most from that? Oh, I know. It was about almost 40 minutes, 35 minutes. I just liked how like everyone talked about their own project, and everyone had like a good comment for everyone. Everyone was open to discussion. Everyone was talking about what they've been researching, what they found, what they haven't found, what they need to do more of. And I think that really helped. And I was able to like I'm doing physical exercise, and so. I haven't really looked at athletes, and they were all talking about athletic stuff that they do, and that's something that I'm going to do more of, and I didn't even think about that. And so that really helped me and sparked some interest more into my paper. So I'm going to definitely use that into my paper. So it definitely helped me, and it was really interesting to hear something totally different, because they all had different ideas than any of my classmates, and so I thought that was interesting too. Chris, go ahead. Yeah. Introduce yourself, and let's get some other voices Sure. Here. Well, um, Cassidy is uh, a student of mine. You know, she's great. Uh, really a positive influence in class. And I was really impressed with how she just took it and ran with it the other day. Um, I just asked her, because 
I think, Joe, you had identified some people from your end who wanted to, or who had similar interests in health and, you know, those kinds of topics. So I just asked Kath Cassidy, because I had her in the class before, I said, would you mind, um, you know, just being able to set up the Hangout or be ready to go with that? So we had a little time just to at least talk about it. And then... Um, she did it and, and really was just uh, natural at it um, and really did a nice job with, I think, bringing people out, uh, having them talk about it and, and asking um, some really good questions. Um, and so I think there's a lot to unpack here. Number one, I think Joe seeing the intersections of the different students and how we have come to identify those things has made it productive as opposed to just turning on a camera in my classroom and seeing what happens in another classroom. Um, there's some groundwork that I think is pretty interesting that's going on. Um, and, and really, yeah, Cassidy took the point on one of those and uh, you know, just showed yeah. how, how you know, students can be leaders and really articulate well. Right. And you know what? One of the things, and and I'm not surprised in in this network that um, we we we're really trying for a peer to peer, a student to student kind of interaction. Um, and so, but when I look to see what how other people are using Hangouts, it it is about bringing experts into the classroom or going on field trips, which is exciting too. So we can kind of think about different possibilities. Um, I say that all to set up Jennifer here. Jennifer, do you want to introduce yourself? Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, my name is Jennifer Zaraski. I'm a library media instructional technology specialist um, in De Pere, Wisconsin, which is a suburb of Green Bay. And um, heard, kept hearing a lot about Hangouts within the last couple of years. And this year, I decided to pilot a professional development opportunity with our teachers. I partnered with a Google certified trainer in Iowa, Stacy Beamer, mm -hmm. and she led, helped me lead a little training on Google Hangouts for our staff. And that kind of got the wheels turning in our district. And um, I'm in two elementary buildings, so it's very hard for me to talk to and see 1,500 kids at a time. So I started doing book talks on air with our students, hmm. um, which is great. So I'm partnering up. I have one first grade class and a, another first grade class at the other school. Um, they're each choosing children to do book talks, and then the, all the other first grade classes are able to watch. So I've piloted that once a month. Um, one of our So who, who does the book talks? The kids does, do. So the teachers are... Yeah. Yeah, the teachers are, and I can put pop some links into our common area too, so you guys can okay. see how this is happening. Um, so the teachers are volunteering right now, and then they find one or two students that will actually present on a book that they've read and that they've enjoyed. Um, and that's been really successful because the kids are running into the library, and we can't keep up with the book amount of book requests because they all want to read those books afterwards, of course. Um, that also led into one of our principals, principals wanting to try live announcements in the morning, which has totally um, just kind of changed the dynamics. A lot of times the kids for announcements, they didn't even listen because it was so loud and unruly in the classrooms that they missed what was going on. Um, after our first book talk kickoff, one of our teachers had an idea for Read Across America Week to try to connect with other states, and that got my wheels turning and I turned it into a full-blown project and we're actually trying to connect with the other 49 states um, in the US so mm -hmm. I think we have about 12 states to go um, but what I'm doing is matching up classrooms in every state in the US with one of our classroom teachers um, mm -hmm. and then they are scheduling um, a hangout around 15 minutes um, it has to be reading related so they could do um, they could read together they could do choral readings they could do um, book talks together, whatever they want to do, um, and putting them in touch with each other. And then they're going to do a live hangout together. And then I'll take that link from that live YouTube video and pop it on a thing link so that somebody can look at the whole US map and go to any state and watch the hangout that took place in that state. So wow. um, that project has been an undertaking, but um, mm -hmm. so far so good. Uh, it's going well, and I think it's, it's forcing a lot of my teachers or the my colleagues to step outside their comfort zone and in addition I'm finding that it's 
causing a lot of other people in other states to step out of their comfort zone and try something that they've never tried before. And we're, we're connecting our kids, and it's just been really awesome. So um, cool. it's kind of been a snowball effect here in West Pier, and it's been really enjoyable. Well, thank you for joining us, and, and um, you know, we'll come back to you. Um, we've got, uh, Joanna, do you want to introduce? We've got Fremont in the house here tonight. Fremont in the house. Okay. Um, I have two of my students on right now, and Ruby, Ruby's still stuck trying to get on, but um, so Joe Paraiso, we're from Fremont in Oakland, and uh, we've been using Google Hangouts. I, I want to speak to that snowball effect. Like we started using it a little bit, and then we now we're just using it a lot, um, and finding that it's just a really great forum for especially my seniors talking about their senior project topics and just talking about them, um, and and just being able to converse with other people. So I want to echo Cassidy's sentiment, sentiment that just being able to speak to other people in Utah. I mean, it's as far from us as uh, China. So it in terms of just what we know and and the perspective. So. It's been really just, it's been great to see the students kind of take ownership of it um, and the teachers were, you know, slowly kind of stepping back and just watching things happen. So um, I have two of my students um, that have been, both have been Google hanging out with me beyond just um, like in the classroom with Youth Voices. We've been doing them um, for check-ins and like in Tommy's case, um, I can't get him. So, uh, so this is really good in terms of being able to provoke the dialogue, um, and even outside of school, just having conversations with the students, because um, the the day is really full in the school, and so it's just nice nice to be able to get online with them in the evening and just talk about Shakespeare, talk about the senior project. Um, so we're trying to figure out all the different ways we can use it. So I have Tommy and I have Jorge. If either of them want to go ahead and introduce themselves in their research. Uh, hi, my name is Tommy. Uh, you guys hear me, right? Yes, we can hear you fine. Go ahead, Tommy. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm Tommy, and I'm a student of Freeman High in Auckland. And um, I, I have to say, like, I, I've been living in the U.S. only for two years. So uh, I'm, I live in the U.S. For only for two years. So I didn't get to talk to people, like, in different areas, you know. The only student that were able to talk to the people in Auckland. So it's very interesting, like when we do the Google hey now, and I get to understand, I get to talk to people in different area in the United States, and I, you know, people living in different uh, different area, they got different perspective about life, and it's really interesting when I talk to them like that. Tommy, what's your project? Um, my project, I focus on the uh, mental effects of video game like the positive uh, mental effect of video game uh, because like when I when people talk about like violence or something like that they play, vid uh, they play video game for that like they say like video game be the cause of violence and other things like that but uh, I'm a, uh, in my opinion I'm a gamer too but I feel like I learn a lot about video game and I also learn a lot from video game it helped me a lot like for like my list like um, I I speak English not very well, but uh, since when I play video games, I get I get to learn more about the language. I get to learn more about the American culture. So I feel like there are a lot of uh, ben uh, positive effects from video game. Interesting. And it was interesting that the the young I think it was a young man from Salt Lake City was mm -hmm. was uh, having a negative. View of, of video games, at least mainly, I think. And, and the two of you were kind of circling around each other, never really kind of said, you know, we disagree with each other very clearly. But you could you could tell that you weren't really in agreement. Did you notice that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it takes a while to get comfortable to disagree and, and really have a dialogue. I think. But we got we got something started. Mm -hmm. well, uh, um I know what you're doing. You're doing manga, right? Yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah. Hi, by the way, I love seeing a student's face and saying, oh, manga. Uh, oh, video <laughs> game. Right, go ahead. Oh, yeah, my name is Jorge Espinosa. Uh, my uh, topic is about um, the, you know, the effect of, uh, manga has on its readers. My, most of my project is talking about how 
most students who actually read manga and stuff can relate to the manga so so much that it reflects on their own lives and how the effect can also apply to those who don't even know what manga is as well. That can um, affect, uh, affect, affect their lives. Yeah. And what's it been like? Um, Youth Voices 6, I put it up um, a couple days ago. It's a conversation between you and, and Ms. Uh, Ms. Faricio. What, what's it been like having those conversations um, after school on a hangout like this? Well, it was pretty fun. I mean, it was just talking about um, coming up with ideas about um, about the like um, some things that I would have to do in order to get more publicity for my project. Like all the ideas that I would have to do to get more people to get focused on my project. Because there are some people who like don't really care about stuff like that. So I have to get I have to be more creative with mine so I can get more. Um, more attention to it, basically. And so it's been pretty fun just coming up with the ideas and, and talking about manga and stuff because I always enjoy talking about manga and stuff. So, yeah. Cool. You know, Jorge, I, I think my students who are 6th, 7th graders um, are just surprised that they're, they would be allowed to have that as a topic. <laughs> so, so they look at you and say, wow, I could study that. So there's, you know, that's interesting. But I'm wondering if you could think about, um, you know, getting their their perspective sometime. We could gather four or five of them together, and you could interview them, maybe. Would that make sense? Uh, that, yeah, that would be great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Paul. That'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. I I do have to say, Paul. I have a, a few students that would like because uh, they saw Young John on. We keep mm -hmm. wanting to call him Little John on the Hangout. <laughs> Um, don't tell him he said that. Um, but but they wanna they saw him and they would like to interview more of that age because of what they're studying. It's it's a school education related topic, and they'd like to branch beyond high school. So I I could I could totally see if that's good. Um, middle schoolers have becoming focus groups for our seniors and just I, I don't whatever that could look like. That would be yeah. Awesome. I've got to organize those groups. Um, the, the one week that got very chaotic, it was so interesting. They grabbed their computers and ran to other um, other rooms and, and jumped on the Hangout from the other rooms. They were like, but, you know, the, the, they took that kind of ownership. Kind of what is it, what is the, the Hanging Out, the video linking of all these people? What is that, what value does that add to learning, I guess, is where we were. And um, Sheena is just joining us right now. So, Sheena, do you want to introduce yourself? Um, hi, everyone. My name is Sheena. This is actually the first uh, online hangout that I've done um, for, you know, like uh, teachers, which I'm excited about. Um, I'm a high school teacher. I teach in Maryland. Can you still hear me? Yep. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> yeah, um, and I'm actually a special education teacher. Um, so I have intensive classes, and I also co-teach with general educators. I'm doing English and world history this year, 11th grade. Have you done Hangouts at all before? Um, I've tried. I've tried it once, um, where we watched um, President Obama's Hangout um, with my class, and I also was a Peace Corps volunteer. So I am interested in doing a Hangout with um, some of uh, my friends that I still communicate with in Niger, West Africa, to have my students be able to talk, you know, face-to-face -face with friends in Niger. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm kind of just... Um, wow. So experimenting. Yeah, experimenting. Yeah, yeah, experimenting. I've so, heard about uh, field trips. Kevin, too. Um, Kev, Kevin I, heard, I did hear before I got um, frozen out, I don't know what happened here, that um, your list of ways that we might use this and, and, and it, those seemed like pretty formal kinds of suggestions you were making. Um, and I would certainly agree that some of the wild stuff that we started with, with the students, wasn't very productive. However, I'm wondering, so, so I'm wondering if we could, we could think about a spectrum of those, those more formal kinds of debates and, and presentations and so forth on one end. And conversations on another end, and if if there can be some meeting in between, is that does anybody else kind of think about that? 
Well, earlier on, I heard I heard a couple of different R's. I heard uh, releases. And I heard what they amounted to uh, were rehearsals, which I thought were good ideas. And the thing that I would contribute, being sort of a more of a technical person, I guess, would be resources. I see, uh, I think, um, plenty of fertile ground for uh, using uh, maybe slightly higher quality cameras or um, making other students participate in the Hangout by uh, doing what they do in television studios, you know, making a little booth to broadcast from, doing a little bit of set dressing, you know, set dressing from theater, mm -hmm. making something appealing, which, God forbid, please don't look behind me. But, but Kevin, I don't, think, I don't think that's what we're after here, though. No, we're you after want conversation. more informal world? We're after a conversation, I think. Uh, yeah, but if you go into a job interview or you, you meet with people in a professional setting, and and don't you don't you feel that your communication is enhanced by having a certain standard? I mean, don't you? Isn't the whole point of an education to teach people to find a kind of comfortable common ground where they feel they look good and and they feel that they have control of their persona in terms of the broadcast, for example? Right, and the common ground that I'm looking for is thinking about a spectrum and thinking about how can we have real deeper conversations that go beyond just, you know, hi, you're pretty or, <laughs> or whatever, you know, to, but, but not necessarily going to rehearsed. So we want people thinking as they're talking, I think, like I'm doing right now. <laughs> you know? um, I, think, I think it depends, though, on what the final, I mean, what's the final outcome in the end. So I'm looking at Jorge right now, and Jorge and I have talked about how if he posted work like some of the manga, the original manga that hopefully he produces with other kids, and he posted that online and had a conversation with people about that after he's posted, say, work, I think that's a that's like a that's a process conversation where I think like my background might not need to be so pretty and we use a Google Hangout really and truly as like can I get feedback um, real feedback um, when you're doing it but then I also see that the formal Kevin what you're talking about where you kind of set it up more because I kind of work when we did a few of these hangouts like after I saw what we look like in the background um, trying to situate my students so that we now then if you look at the hangouts the last couple they're kind of look like a choir because um, <laughs> because I don't know what it looks like to other people that might be watching it mm -hmm. I also want my students to, to, to feel like they look good or you know that there's some that they just look right on camera I don't know what that means though you know we're just trying it so I, I just feel I, like yeah it depends yeah I, I don't think that just like you stop over to your friend's house and have a cup of coffee and you have a chat and that's that's one level of formality. You know, there are other ways. And not just resources in terms of professional studio production necessarily, but also just making sure that the lighting is good, that the cameras are good, that the students understand the foreground and background. Again, I see, when I look at the film strip at the bottom here, I see a varying approaches to making uh, what shows up on the screen be just the part of you that you want to show, I think. In this case, the, I think the more experienced people have taken a little bit of time to present their face and not have a busy background, which is clearly something I, I didn't give much thought to today. You know, and and just basic lighting so that you're... The, the big advantage of the Google Hangout that I think is clear is the meta-communication. Mm -hmm. The facial expressions, the kinesics, the the part uh, of your expression when you communicate that allows you to reach out to other people and really influence them with the earnestness of your presentation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What the background? Loss in communication is in itself. Who is that? Is that Annabelle talking? Yeah, sorry, that's Annabelle. Yeah. No, okay. And introduce yourself. I, I was off air when you were, when you jumped in here. Annabelle. Oh, uh, well, I I run a uh, a nonprofit called Big Fun Education, and I started out as um I I trained as a teacher in England, 
um, taught in France for a year and then taught fifth grade in New York City. And out of that came a series of plays. Um, I, I used to do theatre with the kids because our textbooks were so old and boring. I taught in a little um, private school that was not fancy at all um, in Washington Heights. And uh, we decided that we didn't like the textbooks. And uh, the kids were shocked that I agreed with them, that they looked boring. So we, put, we took a vote and we put all the textbooks away in the closet. And uh, then I had to teach um, ancient Greek you know, civilization. So I taught through a play and then I said to the kids, remember those books? Uh, we might want to use those for reference books. So sort of redefining the textbook way back then in 30 years ago, uh, finding a reason to, to want to know that information as opposed to just, you know, here's chapter one. And so, well, can, I, yeah. and can I just uh, ask you to talk, ha have you talked at all yet about the project that you're working yes. on there? Yes. You have already. Okay. Yeah, just, yeah. So that's, okay. you know, just out of that came my theatre project, and 30 years on, I'm still working on it, still trying to get it right, trying to bring it into the digital age, and uh, so now I'm doing this thing, Macbeth Goes Social, and uh, we've got a series of hangouts, all sorts of different kinds of hangouts, um, bringing in theatre specialists, trying to make the hangout itself a dramatic event, um, which I don't want to disclose too much, because I really want it to be a surprise and to get the kids to live blog it and blog it and tweet about it and also have the kids wrangle the questions that come in uh, from different sources. So really I want to authentically rely on the kids to, um, to, help, to help produce a good show. Can, I, can, I, can we hear from the students about this question? Like, do you want to rehearse? Do you want to just talk? Or what's valuable to you? Paul, I'm going to pop out for a second here and put Cassidy back in. Okay. Thank you. I can... Yeah. Jorge, do you have any thoughts on that? You're muted, uh, Jorge. <coughs> there you go. Yes. Um, so, what was the question again? I... <laughs> How formal do you want these? Or could these become? Would it be? Would it? Would you like that? Would it help you think? Um, or do you want them to be informal? I think um, informal would be better because then people, because um, when when you normally talk to someone, you don't you're not really that much formal. You just you know you just start spinning out words and see where it's getting it, to see where where the conversation is going. And get to actually know the person because if you speak in a formal kind of tone, that also the other person kind of off a little bit, I guess. Like for like student-wise, because students like they don't, sometimes they get really like um, bored from school and speaking formal and like in papers and stuff. So if they able to talk uh, informally, then they would have a better time communicating with others. Cassidy, did you hear any of of what we're trying to get to here? No, sorry. I was oh, trying so, to. Somebody want to get summarize in. for me? <laughs> Better than I did. No. I, I, so, so here's 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 one thing that that we should clarify. The the way teacher seat and teachers works is just um is just like this. Uh, we meet every week, and and some and it's not terribly formal. So so that's one thing to think about in terms of how much preparation to do. Um, Joe, I like how you said that even in just a couple of broadcasts, you started thinking about some of the technical things and, and so forth um, and how we represent ourselves and how kids represent themselves. All that's good, um, but because they're not one-offs, right, it's not like a performance, it does seem to me that, that um, the goal of our connections have to do with on, for the Youth Voices stuff has to do with having new ideas at the moment of utterance, right? So um, that feels like an important thing to, you know, preserve room for. But, but Cassidy, the question, so one way to approach this question might be if, um, do you think we could rehearse or prepare better for, for the hangouts we have with students? 
Um, well, one thing Mr. Sloan has talked about is just like talking about our ideas is a better way to like understand what we're trying to learn. And when we, I think like maybe having like an idea, like if we're going into a Google Hangout talking about like our just our research paper or like that, then maybe that will help. But I just like talking about like anything and talking with other students, like talking with Tommy about the video game. I thought that was really cool and interesting and really fun and getting to know someone. So I thought this was really good. I really liked it and I would do it again. And I think it would be more fun to have more students if that would be possible um, to talk about research too because I because like I still like have a lot to do on my research paper and I would be willing to talk about that if that was possible but I liked it I really liked yeah. it cool I think Cassidy could I jump on um, Crocodile for a second mm -hmm. Chris is that okay so, so I did. I did put up a video, and and right on your member page, there's a link to a video. It's a little six-minute video that talks about how to use Crocodoc, how to um, how to put up an article in Crocodoc. So there, and this is going kind of totally in a different direction. But if Cassidy, if you logged into Youth Voices right now and you went down to your member home and you found the Youth Voices Crocodoc folder. You would find now inside that folder there's a folder called exercise and physical activity. I think it's something like to that to that okay. effect. And a couple of the articles that you have found already, and then a couple of others that I found, I put up there as PDFs, and then you can actually annotate them there online. Oh, um, that's awesome! And the cool thing about it is it gives you a unique. URL and then other people could have conversations with you there too, right? So okay. um, you'll notice that, that that I'm doing that. I'm sort of looking on Youth Voices, finding people's sources, and finding the PDF versions or making the PDF versions using printfriendly.com, and then putting those up into folders, and then people can find them and and read them. I mean, there is an assumption there. Which I should say, I'm saying this really fast, but which is that we want you to read deeply. <laughs> we don't like sometimes when we do research, we're just like grabbing and and looking over things really fast. Mm -hmm. But one of my values, and I think we can use this technology to kind of promote, is is collaborative reading, reading with other people, and um, like reading. Uh, with a lot of response, right? So you're being thoughtful and, and as you read through stuff. So there are a couple studies that, that I think I found and put up there. Perfect. Well, thank I, you. I'll definitely yeah. look at that tomorrow for. So, Chris and, great. Chris and Joe, any res did, did, is that helpful or is it too much? Or what do you think about it? <laughs> or do you understand even? what I'm talking about yeah. So Paul you're basically <laughs> yeah. saying that that we now we have a converse we have conversations happening on hangouts and a, a potential next step is our kids that might have common research topics jumping on a on a doc together and continuing the conversation there in written form and then bringing it back to the hangout again and and, and basically just keeping up the, di the the cycle of dialogue both written and oral. Yeah, but right. But I noticed that I think Chris, your students um, looked at some of Joe's students' work and suggested resources for them. Right. Right. Is that is that what happened? Yeah. So um, one of the things I tell them in when making comments is that we can say a lot of things. We can um, um, connect to our personal experience to kind of help people, uh, you know, flesh out topics. But another thing is we can put links to other resources. So when my students come across Tommy or Jorge's posts, if they um, do a little reading around that themselves and search in their own way, uh, if they come across resources that they think Tommy or Jorge might benefit from, you know, the idea is to drop those links into comments on their Youth Voices posts. Right. 
And and Tommy, there's if if you go to the Crocodile folder again, Youth Voices Crocodile folder. If you can't find it, let me know. But it's uh, you click under Welcome your name, and then it'll say Member Home, and then on that list there's a link to the Crocodile folder. There is a there is a video games and kids folder that yes. over the over the last year or two we've been collecting articles there. So that might be a way to find stuff and and kind of respond to each other. Again, what's what's nice about it then when you post something, you can say, "I read this." If you want to go read it and see what I thought when I read it, you can go to this link and and, and see it. Right. So it's a way to share resources. It seems to me. That's what I'm suggesting. <laughs> Just one more thing to throw in the mix. It's <laughs> Well, Cassidy can kind of yeah. um, tell me whether this makes sense. But, you know, um, we've been searching, you know, doing um, search operators on Google, for instance, but also looking at um, stuff that is password protected that's available through our library. And um, so, you know, that's Chris, like... Chris, can I, can I jump on that one? Sorry. sorry. I, yeah. I know you have a lot you to know, say about that. Well I, well, I just have one thing to say. Four out of five times if they're not password protected, I can find the articles anywhere. Right. So, so yeah, that's that's another conversation. So like, yeah. Okay. I know. But my point is, <laughs> yeah. all right. Quickly, my point is, if they're they're in this uh, information age, this is a knowledge mm -hmm. economy. They should at least know how to function through databases. I'm not saying this stuff yeah. is only in databases, but that they may have a job where they'll have to navigate databases. Sure. But anyway, so what I'm thinking with Crocodile is um, that could be another kind of database of sorts that students are generating and that could be like the next thing that I could have students do or an activity down the road would be you know build um, some folders or files in these Crocodile folders so that other Youth Voices students could uh, use them and sometimes Cassidy I think there's a lot of stuff that I throw at you guys and I, I go kind of slow with those so you I can like give me it. some feedback. I actually like it because I keep pretty much on track with all of it. Like, I think I got behind because I did the chat, and that's when I got behind on all these voices and stuff. But I like it because now I have all my stuff organized in there in my Google Doc, and I can just click to it, and I have my EBSCO right there and click to it. I have my site operator. So I like it, and all my stuff research is right there. So I like the stuff that you throw at us. I don't know about everyone else, but right, cause, I, mean, I would there's, keep it. There's another layer, Paul, we've been working with Sod mm -hmm. from SiteLighter, uh, you know, and using that tool, too. So, yeah. I, you know, sometimes I'm a little that. hesitant to toss. I love SiteLighter. <laughs> yeah. that, and, and that helps you cite the sources? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Cool. No, all, all that's important, and, and, you know, I... you. You're right. Your your point is correct. I also just think it's so interesting to, to be able to find the stuff out on the, you know, wild west to, uh, <laughs> the wild web. Um, but um, yeah. So check that video out if that if that's helpful. Um, do you guys have? Can we end this tonight by saying do you have a plan for tomorrow? <laughs> Are you talking about our hangout for tomorrow? Yeah. And and by oh, the way. Yeah. I did think I did think of a, a somewhere in between place, which is that kids could come ready for, to present, you know, their research or where they are in their research in a more formal way, and then let conversation break out of that. So, and that seems to be where we're going anyhow. So, was there any thought yet? Well, I'll just for jump tomorrow? in, Joe, really quick. Yeah. Um, it's funny you should mention that, but tomorrow uh, my students are going to be like in groups of three just kind of talking through what they found so far because they've been finding a lot of stuff so I was envisioning maybe uh, Cassidy you could kind of be the point person again just bringing two people who haven't really talked and have them talk a little bit at length about what they've been finding and and Joe I don't know if that works for you but that's kind of where we are where people need to talk about their topics with each other for an extended period uh, yeah, we're good for that. I had um, Donik was going to come on if we were going to do um, anything related to fashion and media influence on fashion, but 
I can bring on anybody at this point. So um, do you want look, us to be sounding I'll boards? I'll look through my class. Okay. And Cassidy, you kind of think of some people who might work for that general topic, and we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, we're looking at the, the whole fashion and I guess, not social media, but I guess media influence on things like, yeah. Okay, sounds good. That would be awesome. Thanks, Cassidy. You're welcome. Joe, I, I liked how the topics were somewhat related, but yeah, we realized right. they, they became more related as we talked <laughs> in, in, in Youth Voices 5. At least. Yeah. yeah, I kind of yeah. just did a grab bag of everyone doing sports and health come into the room, and that's what happened. So mm -hmm. now I'm doing everyone doing fashion and media come into the room. But we right. can open it up. Chris, so, if you want. So we have a plan. I'll get on about noon Pacific time, yep. and then whenever classes start, we'll start then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds um, good. Because I do think I do think doing this on a regular basis is, is like the, the one key. Because then other people will say, "Oh, that's when I can hook up with those folks." So, um, and we want to invite that to happen. Um, uh, any any final thoughts here? We went over and we uh, got knocked off or something, and I hope you had a good conversation when I, when I wasn't here <laughs> uh, as well. But uh, why don't we quickly go around and just hear if anybody has any final thoughts. Cassidy, do you have any final thoughts? Um, I thought this was really good, and I hope we can continue doing this and get more students to come on board, so hopefully we can keep it up. So thanks for inviting me, too. <laughs> cool. Thank you, Cassidy. Annabelle, you have any thoughts? Well, thanks for inviting me. I'm just trying to explore ways of using Hangouts and um, keeping my ears open. And I think listening to the students and, and their point of view is really important. So I think this is a wonderful thing that you're doing. Jorge, any thoughts as we leave? Um, well, not really. Everyone said what I basically what I just had in mind. Cool. Kevin. I just would say that the big thing that comes to me is how powerful it is to break down isolation and uh, bring people together who are hugely far apart, who might seldom, if ever, see each other. Uh, and that's uh, unfortunately, I think the fellow who, who was working on the Navajo reservation dropped out there. Mm -hmm. I was going to say there's a lot of ways to uh, extend the network these days where you can bring people who are far apart in the country like that together. But also the social part of it, is, it can't be uh, overstated, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Tommy, any thoughts? Uh, I really like this. I like how we talk to, uh, with uh, different people from different parts of the country. It's really cool. Great. And Sheena, how was your first time? Uh, it was great. I um, I have a lot of research to do. I was taking a look at the website as um, we were hanging out, and um, I'm really interested. Um, I'd like to see how we can participate at my school in Maryland. Um, of course, my population of students are um, special ed students, but maybe we could do, you know, some collaboration with mentoring and helping, um, you know, with citations and research and things like that. Um, I'm not sure, but yeah, this is very exciting, and I'm looking forward to it. Great. So we're here every Wednesday. Um, usually we're done before here now. Thank you for staying in there, folks. Appreciate it. Uh, we uh, we started six six p.m. Um, on the West Coast, nine p.m. here on the East Coast, and um, we have been doing this for several years now. And we started with uh, Dave Cormier and Jeff Lebo um, at edtechtalk.com, which is a channel of the World Bridges Network. And hi, do you want to say anything, check in, or <laughs> sorry? Oh, no, no problem. Um, no, I was just thinking about, um, so the youth I work with right now are working at, they, they have a lot of the similar social issue topics that they're working on, mm -hmm. but they're taking, um, uh, a philosophical or, or ethical look at, at those topics rather than a, um, I guess you could say, uh, research in the traditional sense of mm -hmm. looking at what's pre previously been said about those. So I am I am interested in if we can ever work out a time <laughs> that would actually work. We had a snow day the last time we tried to do a hangout mm -hmm. together. 
Um, but I am interested in figuring out, that's, that, those are hard conversations to have, to dive in, like, to talk about the underlying, I guess, theories and philosophies about social aspect versus the data that we have about social issues. Mm -hmm. so, so I am thinking about maybe having um, some kind of guiding questions um, that would help. So we might take a topic, you know, we could talk about the research around a particular social issue, but it would be great if we could talk, then go th maybe through some guiding questions that we could think together about what are, what's kind of a, some of the underlying assumptions that are under, underneath that social issue um, and talk about the root of it as well. That would be really helpful for the youth I'm working with right now. Cool. And are they at NYU when you see them after no, school? No, well, it's a combination. Um, so we haven't been able to have the same tech that um, that we have had in the past. So I'm actually at um, some of their schools when, when they get online. And then they can also access things on their own, but they just haven't done it. You know, people are nervous to try it on their own for the first time without... But you do see them at 3 p.m., right? Um, in that on that particular day, so there's only particular days that I'm even working okay. on. And there's so only we'll, particular days that can But next Thursday is another day I will be there at 3 p.m. Eastern time. So if there's if we can set something up for that, that'd be great. So why don't we say that next? So this okay. Thursday is going to be media and fashion. And next Thursday it's going to be uh, philosophy and social issues with your students taking the lead. Um, yeah, that'd be great. We I haven't seen okay. them in in like three months. I know. So I, I probably will need a little bit of time to, to even get back on the topic. But but if we could pick some of these social issues, I mean, even issues around fashion would be of interest. And mm -hmm. then there's some underlying about how do we present ourselves and our identities and how that's tied up in like our clothes. Like there's some. I think anything that any one of these topics has some underlying uh, things to talk about. Cool. Okay. We're going to say thank you to everybody here tonight, um, and we'll see you soon. Great. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Good night.